Good morning and Merry Christmas. Today for our morning live stream service, uh, and by the way, this is not live, this is a pre-recorded service, uh, but for today for our morning streaming, uh, we will um, use the Liturgy of the Hours morning prayer service from the Lutheran Service Book, page 235. Lutheran Service Book, page 235. If you don't have access to the service, it, is print, it will be available for you uh, on the screens as well. Our opening hymn this morning is, O Come, All You Faithful. of heaven above. Glory to God in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Cry the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning, Jesus, to thee be glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh of adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. <clears throat> oh, Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. the Christ is born. Oh, come, let us worship him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a 
joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning now and will be forever. Amen. Lo, to us the Christ is born. Oh, come, let us worship Him. We read Psalm 2. <clears throat> Why do the nations rage? and the people's plot in vain. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away the cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Our office hymn for today is Come, Your Hearts and Voices Raising. Beams with calm 
comfort sweet and tender forcing satan to surrender breaking all the powers of hell from the bondage that oppressed us from sin's fetters that possessed us from the grief that sore distressed us we the captives now are free oh the joy beyond expressing when by faith we grasp this blessing and to you who come confessing that your love has set us free. Gracious child, we pray, oh, hear us from your lowly manger, cheer us, gently lead us and be near us till we join your choir above. Our first of three readings come from Isaiah, the 52nd chapter. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy, for eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has barred his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. Long ago, <coughs> in many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom all also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name of he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our third and final reading comes from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us 
by his son. <clears throat> in the beginning, John opens his gospel in this way so that those who hear it might be immediately drawn to it in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God spoke. God had no need of machines or blueprints or chemicals or pre-existing matter to create. Before he spoke, all that existed was God. There was no time, no space, no matter or substances. Just he who has the power to create with mere words. And in timelessness, God chose to reveal himself to his creation through words. A supreme God who speaks words and who hovers over his creation. And his first words, let there be light, reveal how the word eternally works. This was the word being the word. God's word is a light that shines brightly in the darkness a light which brings clarity and understanding into chaos and futility. The light of God is ultimate, universal, unwavering truth. It shines and reality is created. And in the end, nothing escapes its eminence. The light shined into the nothing and something was formed, a universe full of stars and plants and a, a planet made specifically for sustaining life and vegetation. And upon its shores, God formed <clears throat> the pinnacle of his creation, a lump of clay made in his own image and likeness. And he breathed life into this molded clay and called him man. This being of flesh and blood, along with his wife, was to oversee all of the Lord's creation, to tend to the garden and cherish the animals. They were to worship the Lord freely and lovingly and express their love with one another through their own miracle of creation. But something horrible crept its way into the garden, a creature cleverer than all creation. It learned to speak words, defiant, baleful words, bent on corrupting paradise and turning God's children into beasts. The serpent deceived Adam and Eve, causing them to question their purpose, to question their creator. And in their disobedience, all future offspring of Adam and Eve were full of corruption and knew nothing but rebellion and sin. But the Lord wasn't finished with his creation. He had him in mind from the beginning to bring redemption. And he would do this by not only being the God who creates all things, but by becoming creation itself, by becoming man. For centuries, the Lord spoke of a promise, a Messiah who would come and rescue his people from Satan and from death. And for centuries, the people waited and prayed and hoped. And, and, at, the just, and, at, just, and at the just and right time, in a small town outside of Jerusalem, in a stable, a sty for animals, a child is born. But not just any child. A child born to a virgin whose father is the Lord Most High. The Word became himself flesh and pitched his tent among us. This is inexplicable beyond understanding, beyond reason, but is true nonetheless. God, in order to redeem his creation, redeem humanity, became humanity. But Jesus was not the son of Adam, full of sin and disobedience. He is the son of God, and his flesh is without sin. Jesus is the true Adam, the Adam who fulfilled his purpose, who lived up <coughs> to his father's expectations, of whom the father said, this is my beloved son, who is very good. Listen to him. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He, the word, was born of a virgin to suffer and die on the cross so that you might live as you were intended to live forever in paradise, in communion with the one true and only God. Now, the Lord never says that you will feel him or experience him or find him in your heart. Jesus came not as a philosophy or an encounter. Jesus came as a man, a human being. And as you interact with all other human beings, so too must you interact with Jesus through flesh and blood, through words and speaking, through suffering and pain, through joy and laughter, through tears and mourning. 
Jesus comes to us as the promised Messiah fulfilled. He is even now in our eternal dwelling as our flesh and blood Savior and Lord preparing our place. When we get there, we will see God as a man. We will see his powerful word which creates and saves wrapped in flesh and blood. And forever we will be with our God and Lord living life in the way it was meant to be lived. For now, we wait. And while we wait, we suffer. We suffer from the effects of sin in a fallen and dying world. We suffer from the endless voice and constant words of a defiant and deceptive serpent who has never ceased speaking ever since that day in Eden. We suffer from our own frail flesh as it moves day by day ever closer to the day when it returns to the dust of the earth from whence it came. Dear Christians, as we continue to wait and as we continue to suffer, never take your eyes off the holy and glorious cross of Christ. Never stop gazing at the blood and tears, the sweat and the marred flesh of the word of God hidden in Jesus. See him suffer there for you. Hear him cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me for you? Listen for his last breath and his final words. It is finished and believe. For by his death, you live. And should that wicked and ancient serpent crawl into your ear and tell you that there's more to this faith than Jesus in his death, silence his twisted voice with the powerful word of the Lord, which has already crushed his evil head forever. Listen to Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith, the one who endured for you and who now lives and reigns forever and ever and will return to judge Satan and this world and deliver you home. Amen. We continue with the Benedictus. <laughs> Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. Come to his people and redeem them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Though he's holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies. From the hands of all who hate us, he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. 
At this time, the offertory will play. If you wish to make an offering online, you are welcome to do that by using the little scan code at the bottom right of this image uh, or by typing in the URL that you see there, um, the Give page on St. Paul's Malacca's website. Let us pray. Most merciful God, you gave your eternal word to become incarnate of the pure virgin. Grant your people grace to put away fleshly lusts, that they may be ready for your visitation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings be ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The, the Lord Almighty bless us and direct our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. Our departing hymn is a beautiful hymn uh, that has been around for now a little while. LSB 373, See Amid the Winter Snow.